I feel like the next arc should be the Grey Zone Jimmy Dore arc. It's been a while since we've had a solid arc. The alt-right is in hiding. The conservatives are afraid. Uh, we need we need a break from the lefties. The tankies we've we've meandered in for a while. I think it's time. I think it's time. It's damn time, you know. Let's let's pump up these numbers, folks. This right here, this is the um, this is the gray zones tag for Vosh with only one article in it. I think we can get way higher numbers here. I showed this on stream a little while ago. It's on the Vosh pit, the content here. But like, just a second, okay? Let's go over it again really, really quickly. <laughs> okay. So anyway, leaked files expose serious psyops veteran astroturfing bread tube star to counter COVID restriction critics. Now those are a lot of words. Basically, in this article, in which I'm featured, thank you, uh, they're saying that uh, Abigail Thorne works for like British intelligence to spread misinfo. Let let's just. Leaked documents have revealed a state-sponsored influence operation designed to undermine critics of the British government's coronavirus policies by astroturfing a prominent founder of the BreadTube clique of anti-fascist YouTube influencers. Uh, and it, it goes on, I think, as you might uh, imagine for a while. Um, I've looked through the article. There's nothing here. It's, it's absolutely nothing. Um, I think it's like Abigail Thorne has done some work with this one thing, which is like a not at all secret sort of government adjacent product. I have, I have no idea. It's, it's not, yeah. Um, very un, unimpressive personally. I've done way more for the US government than Abigail Thorne has for the British government. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> of course, the funniest thing here, you know, by far, as we must, is my bit, which makes me look phenomenal. Other popular BreadTube figures include Vosh, a video gamer from Beverly Hills, California, Cal named Ian Koshinsky. Again, this is their top tier journalist, uh, you know, journalism credentials at work here, Koshinsky, uh, correctly spelling my last name, of course, uh, known for his superficial understanding of Marxism, which if you, if you click at it is a Caleb Maupin tweet. I'm not kidding. Uh, crude invective against Trump supporters, they disappear or we all do. Female high school athletes, sorry you fucking suck, dumb bitch. And imprisoned journalist Julian Assange. I want Assange to die in a CIA black site because it would trigger all the worst people on Twitter. Well, here you go. The self-described libertarian socialist has earned the moniker Vosh Limbaugh from his critics. Uh, and... I'd never heard it before reading this article, but it's really good, so please call me it, okay? By the way, they actually edited this article. The original, um, the original bit here actually said, and I'm not kidding, female high school athletes protesting biological males playing in women's sports. The original thing here, they edited it. It was, a, um, it was an anti-trans woman in women's sports thing. Uh, so they, they, they cut that down after it got a lot of negative attention. Yeah, this is, of course, a conservative rag, uh, but they, um, you know, they had to dress that down a little bit. Anyway, we've already talked about that, but now there's more. Didn't you look at this article before? Why are you looking at it again? Do you have banana stuffed in your ears? Jesus. Then we go over to esteemed journalist and comedian <clears throat> Jimmy Dore's channel right over here. Leftist YouTubers co-opted to counter COVID restriction critics. And uh, it is Max Blumenthal talking with Jimmy Dore. And I haven't seen this, and I want to see it, and we're going to see it. Let's go. Right now I'm here with Max Blumenthal and from the, from the Gray Zone. And uh, we're going to be talking about... The More like... <laughs> the Gay Zone. <laughs> Let's go. Bread tube. Now, what is the bread tube? So BreadTube, or LeftTube, is a loose and informal group of online content creators who uh -huh. create video essays from socialist, communist, anarchist, and other left-wing perspectives. I don't make video essays. I hate bread. I hate the definition of BreadTube. Everyone has a different definition, and it never fits in all the people who are included in BreadTube. 
I don't know how people call me a part of BreadTube, but they call me a part of BreadTube. I don't know. BreadTube's creators generally post videos on YouTube that are discussed on other online platforms, such as Reddit. BreadTube creators also live stream on Twitch. BreadTube's creators are known to participate in a form of algorithmic high. I don't care about that. So they're supposed to be left we uh, people, and they're supposedly... Uh, when the New York Times wrote an article about them, they totally they de radicalize right wing people into regular lefty stuff. That's what they that's what they said. Mm-hmm. And in fact, in their funding, this is according to Wikipedia, which Wikipedia is worth shit a lot of times when it comes to stuff like this. Many bread tubers are funded primarily by monthly donations on Patreon and refuse income from advertising and sponsorships. Really? And- uh, generally. Yeah, I think so. Generally, I think I think most bread tubers uh, do mostly Patreon. Uh, at least other YouTubers, I think, are more likely to do uh, other stuff. But yeah, you know, I don't do any subscriptions, at least. As they are not dependent on such income, bread tubers have more freedom to pursue critical critical content. Wait a minute. Well, here's what Caleb Moppin wrote yes! a book about them. This is what he said about uh, bread tube and what their real agenda is. They are, you know, playing up. You ready? Here we go. They are, you know, playing up U.S. foreign policy goals and trying to stigmatize and isolate those who oppose U.S. imperialism, legitimate anti-imperialist, anti-war voices, mainly by trying to equate them with the far right, which is just ridiculous. So what Caleb's Borgar King, isn't it crazy how like we know all these guys, you know, I actually feel like the only reason Jimmy Dore hasn't done a video calling me out or calling me a shit lib or whatever else is probably because he knows the first thing I would say in response is debate me. I actually think that's the reason why I feel like he's taken on a lot of other people, you know, but in my case, like he knows that the reflexive thing I'm going to say is debate me. So. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if he, I don't know if he wants to go down that road. Saying is that what these bread two people are actually? They parrot the United States State Department foreign policy, so they're pro imperialism. And what they actually do is are there to confuse people and to make them think that people like me, who's always been an anti imperialist, is somehow bad right winger. He True. says it. Here we go. Uh, you know, I, I argue that bread tube is dangerous. It is cultivating a generation of people not to be able to tell the difference between David Duke and Jimmy Dore. And if that is not God, that's so this is so based, you know, it's it, it's the same as that gray zone clip where they're um where they're like, you know, Vosh in crude invective against Trump supporters by by, you know, calling this high school athlete a dumb bitch. You know, it's it's like they're they're kind of making the argument for me here. Yeah, you know, go for it. Not dangerous. I don't know what is. David Duke is a racist, an anti-Semite, a hater, a bigot, a former Klansman. Jimmy Dore is a progressive, anti-war comedian standing up for truth and justice and peace. And, and, and but in the you know you look at Bosch's comments, hey! Bosch is trying to psych up his audience to equate Jimmy Dore with David Duke. That's dangerous, and you need to oppose that. And that's why you need to you know get out there and challenge it. That's me. So. We go to the gray zone. They have an article about this very thing, this very phenomenon. It says leaked files expose serious psyops veteran astroturfing bread tube star to counter COVID restriction critics. So that would be me and Max Blumenthal. We are COVID. That I miss the Vosh calling uh, Dora a Nazi, but I don't think I've ever called Dora a Nazi. I think like Dora is probably just a, like a shameless grifter, but the whole gray zone, like archetype the whole project you know jimmy Dore, caleb up and whatever the broader goal is just moving people on the left over to the right that's the thing that they do you know it starts with you know look at how ineffective uh you know mainstream leftists are at countering you know the effects of capitalism and income inequality look at how bad america is geopolitically and that's true those are good points you know and then it's like well you know wouldn't things be so much better if we dropped all of these like progressive talking points you know if we stopped uh, standing by these issues like on race, on gender, on sex matters, and then we focused purely on economics. And then it goes to, you know, let's cultivate a fan base that spends more time shitting on what exists of the left than what exists of the right to the point that we're implicitly suggesting that the right is better than the left uh, at the at the goals that we have. And eventually, you know, you, you go full on right. This is happening for all of them. Uh, Haas Infrared is posting blood and soil shit on Twitter. Uh, Jamson Hinkle, the guy who was just over here on the left side, used to call himself a communist on Twitter and now just refers to himself as an American patriot. 
Uh, Jimmy Dore's audience is primarily conservative, which is why when he posted his pro CRT video, it had more dislikes than likes. And since then, he's mostly focused on uh, COVID uh, anti-vax stuff. Uh, Caleb Maupin is friends with Dugan, the literal founder of the Nazbul movement, uh, who has made like comments anti-degeneracy. Uh, they are, they are all like stands for the Russian government, you know, um, and many of them are on its payroll, including Caleb Maupin. It's it's basically just a big project to uh, move left leaning people over to the right, or at the very least, to make them more amicable to the geopolitical interests of the Russian state. That's the whole. That's like the whole game right there. There's not like that's pretty much the entire thing. Sometimes they do it for money. Sometimes they do it because they're legitimate, like Russian agents. Sometimes they do it because they're just conservatives, and Russia is a conservative state you know there are a ton of directions you can go with this but at the end of the day that's like the thrust of the issue restriction critics and i don't know of any other ones on youtube that consider themselves left by covertly recruiting popular youtube influencer abigail thorne to counter growing opposition to the uk's government covid restrictions psyops pros are bringing home the tactics they honed in the syrian dirty war leaked documents have revealed a state-sponsored influence operation designed to undermine critics of the british government's coronavirus policies True. by astroturfing a prominent founder of the breadtube click as anti-fascist YouTube influencers. The project aims to conduct psychological profiling on British citizens dissenting against policies such as mandatory vaccination and lockdowns, then leverage the data to establish a YouTube channel that portrays these critics as dangerous super spreaders of disinformation. So <clears throat> even in the incredibly fear way they present this, uh, this is very like obvious sociological research right here. Uh, conduct so psychological profiling means doing surveys on, uh, you know, which attributes, characteristics, and beliefs correlate to different positions on COVID-19, lockdowns, mandates, etc. And then to talk about uh, who is spreading misinformation and what those things correlate to. It's very, very simple research. We've been doing stuff like this for decades in all fields. It's not special, but this does make it sound a lot scarier. I've been a victim of this several times at a very <laughs> high level designed what? to curb the influence of pseudosciences, pseudoscience material what? online with so specific emphasis of pseudosciences, pseudoscience material. Okay, I think that's worse than any mispronunciation I've done in recent history. Personally, I think this one, I think this is worse than, than the type of stuff that I do by far. Designed to curb the influence of pseudosciences, pseudoscience material online with specific emphasis on coronavirus related anti-vaxxing sentiment. The operation is run by the UK's Royal Institution and dubbed challenging pseudoscience. <laughs> so this is the government sponsoring what? people clandestinely, clandestinely to undermine people like me. And they've done it. Plenty. Its top patron is Charles, the Prince of Wales, next in line to the British throne, who recently hit out at supposed conspiracy theories surrounded COVID-19 vaccines. The organization received a substantial cash injection in 2020 from the UK's government's culture recovery fund earmarked for video production. Leaked I'm pretty sure that fund can literally be applied. I I'm pretty sure that's just a government grant program. I don't even know if that implies any degree of government control. I think that's literally just like you can apply for funding if, if it's found a worthwhile project, which is the case for a lot of media related projects in a lot of countries. Files obtained by the Gray Zone indicate that the Royal Institution has enlisted the services of Valent Projects. That's a social change communications firm founded by a public relations operative previously involved in the UK Foreign Office's campaign for violent regime change in Syria. So you see where this guy comes from? So you see where these people, these people were pushing a dirty war in Syria, and now they're trying to undermine people like me. By pushing a dirty war in Syria, he probably means they reported on the fact that Assad used chemical weapons. So I'm looking at the leaked documents right now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm looking at them right now. Uh, it just linked to a download page in the Gray Zone article. Because, uh, you know, I'm curious. I haven't actually looked myself. And it looks like it's just the, the brief, like the project brief, you know? Royal Institution Counter Pseudoscience Project, two phase multi uh, social media project cons uh, comprising of research and media campaign. 
Based in West London, the company has conducted extensive research, researched the spread of 5G conspiracy theories. I'm interested in that, man. The 5G memes are phenomenal. Disinfo in the 2019 UK general election campaign, investigating disinfo and supporting newly democ democ uh, democratizing governments deal with phenomenon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got coffee in my throat. Um, ah, here we go. Along with Valent Projects, the partners collaborating on this project are Telltale Research, Abigail Thorne, who we all know and, and love, challenging pseudoscience, the RI, a number of online research software companies. And then phase one is ethnographic research, which again, really standard sociological shit right here. And then phase two is deliver content through channels and mediums most accessible and credible to those key audiences, namely people who spread a lot of disinfo. This is literally, let's research misinformation, and then let's publish videos that will, that will like, address it. No wonder Dora hates this so much, dude. This is literally, let's find out what people are, are wrong about and do our best to, to ameliorate it by, by correcting the, the record, you know, and it's being treated like it's... No, I mean, this, this is, I mean, if you're a gray zone type, this is literally like, you know, 1984 right here. Countering misinfo is, is the greatest threat possible to their enterprise. Yeah, okay, and then, you know, here, very basic questions here. Um... Uh, anti-vax theories, psychological gaps, mechanisms used to fill those beliefs, you know. Uh, Telltale will conduct community discussion with 10 participants, 10 Skype conversations, 5 filled interviews, uh, coordination, one session with Valent Projects and Abigail Thorne to incorporate online research. Literally this. Let's do like a couple dozen interviews and then let's like talk about it and like make a video. Like that's what we're dealing with right here. Oh my god. All right, well, it is known. This is a very standard, like, project, uh, you know, um, I guess, timetable, you know? Valent has also been sponsored by the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, a U.S. intelligence cutout for a project aimed at investigating disinformation. Okay. Valent's central role in the operation highlights the trend of information warfare specialists bringing the techniques they honed against targets like the Syrian government back home to the West, where increasingly unpopular governments confront masses of citizens ever bristling at coronavirus restrictions. I love this extremely impartial wording. We're increasingly unpop. So, so let's 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 refer to the Syrian government in a neutral context. You know, very popular Syrian government didn't famously lead to a refugee crisis or the displacement of millions in recent history. Then in the West, where increasingly unpopular governments confront massive citizens ever bristling at coronavirus restrictions. I think with time, actually, people have grown more comfortable with with the associated restrictions because there are fewer restrictions. Um, Valent Projects, the group that they're like. Um, freaking out over. Oh, shit! No wonder they don't like them. When I opened this, the first thing that showed up was David Icke. Yeah, right here. No wonder they don't like him. Uh, uh, Valent Projects. They're, they're targeting all their faves, probably. Um, anyway, this is literally just like a... Who? Like a... Is he, is he a Nazi or just a far-right dude? Um, uh, he's, he's a crazy conspiracy theorist. Um... Yeah, he's he's the main lizard people guy. I think he's actually I think he might actually be a Nazi. Anyway, they just do like online disinfo related campaigns. Simple stuff. So the same shit that they use on Syrian government, they're now gonna be using on you the citizen. Because what? you're going against their that government's mandates. <laughs> As in Syria, where communications firms like Valent created, trained, and instrumentalized media organizations to further regime change objectives, they have covertly recruited a famed British YouTube influencer to lend their carefully calculated messaging campaign an authentic flavor. What do you think the odds are that when this video from Abigail came out, it was going to literally say, in, in, cor like a, in correspondence with Valent projects, you know? Like, it's probably literally going to say, hey, I did some work with this group. And then and then the Jimmy Dore types are going to say, well, she only admitted it because we 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 exposed the truth, you know, and there she and there she is. And who's the head of Valent there? Valent, this guy right there, Emil. Hi, Khan. So he's the head of that. And they recruited her uh, to go uh. have people like me and Max. And uh, this is something. Here's a typical tweet from. 
him. He says Russian info ops aren't what they used to be. Someone going by the name of Kit Klemberg is about to publish an article in insert Russian state affiliated media accusing me of being a terrorist propagandist, etc. So far, so yawn. Here's a short thread on what I expected. So anyway, those, there's a, those are the people. This is it. It's, it's really astonishing to me how much of an audience Jimmy Dore has. Because, like, he's an exceptionally boring person when he's not putting on the screamy affect, you know? Alex Jones is entertaining when he gets screamy. He just says things louder. And he's seven minutes in, and all we're doing is reading out highlights from an article, you know? I have no idea. Like, there's scarcely any analysis. Also, let's be fair, he does look like he's constantly suffering some kind of stroke. It's impressive how any single individual screenshot of him is like could be used in a medical chart to demonstrate the presence of some kind of condition. Max, now uh, you wrote this article. It's his forehead. You, There's something. First of all, uh, do you have reason to believe he this is not only happening toast. in the UK, but it's happening here? Definitely happening here. And the UK hey! is often kind of a testing ground for these kind of information warfare operations. Kit Clarenberg who is a British reporter. Does anyone else feel like Max Blumenthal looks a lot? I, I know he's a comedian. The guy who played one of um, one of uh, Saul Goodman's two hitmen in um, in um, uh, 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 oh, it was a Bill Burr. Oh my God, that was Bill Burr. You're right. He does look like Bill Burr, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He absolutely looks like Bill Burr. Yeah. At least in um, you know, people can look different at different times. I feel like, at least in Breaking Bad, let me see if I can... Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like there's a pretty strong... At least a little bit. At least a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's the dead eyes, I think, that really... It's, it's the dead... The dead fish eyes. They have the same hair color, more or less, you know? Same similar hairline i don't know i mean different lighting conditions of course but yeah who has done some of the best work in unpacking a lot of the leaked files that have emerged out of british intelligence cutouts around the syrian dirty war obtained these files from valent um they were they were leaked and uh you know, enormous credit to Kit to, to Kit for for pulling this together, and I came in as editor and then provided a lot of background context on BreadTube, and brought in Caleb Maupin as well <laughs> because Caleb has been writing about BreadTube and remember Kit the, the Caleb Maupin put out a book on BreadTube that was so fucking funny that my dad bought it. It, it it says like it's it's like some shit like i grew up in a millionaire's mansion and my hollywood connected dad appointed me to my throne on youtube and the reason i do well is because of the the dark liberal hollywood establishment pulling the string it was it was co absolutely deranged schizo shit you know it was it was funny as fuck i actually wonder if i could like hold on hold on hold on wait wait, wait. um caleb Maupin. Bread tube book bought. Okay, is is there like um, there were like screenshots. Fuck! I would. Ah, I wish. I wish I just had a a. Oh, here we go. Ah, oh. Ian Vosh Kochinski. They actually got my last name right here. A video game playing child. Why do they keep going the video game? What is it? We it's it's a popular form of media. It's more popular than fucking movies these days. How is that? You wouldn't call me a movie going child because I saw movies when I was a kid. Child of wealth from Beverly Hills named Ian Kochinski has taken on the moniker Vouch. He's been appointed by the YouTube algorithms as the unofficial spokesperson for Marxist, socialist, and leftist thought. Vosh's father is Mark. Vouch to Kochinski, a figure in Hollywood who describes himself on LinkedIn at my dad's job. Yes. Uh, in earlier years, he used the moniker Irish Laddie. Uh, and it goes on. It, it gets way more. Here we go. Wait. In one embarrassing stream, Vosh read aloud quotes from Mao Zedong, Lenin, and Marx, which he said justified support for the Democratic, a Democratic Party of the United States in the 2020 election. <laughs> 
it became clear to many people that the list of quotes had been prepared by somebody else and that Vosh knows very little about Russian and Chinese history. However, this has not stopped this smug video game <laughs> from occupying the position of being the primary Marxist voice on the internet. Vosh routinely quotes from Free Radio Asia. I don't think I've ever quoted from Free Radio Asia. And other U.S. State Department propaganda outlets. A thing to remember, by the way, when when these, the gray zone types, say U.S. State Department, they're saying it with the same, like, you know, like, affect that Nazis say Jews. They, really. They'll say this anytime they don't like something, and they think it's part of a shadowy, nefarious conspiracy to put them down, they'll say, like, they say this the same way other people will say it, like, like when Nazis will say Jewish. They'll put the echoes around it, yeah. While treating them as reliable source of information, while deeming all media from anti-imperialist countries or putting forward an anti-imperialist perspective is non-credible. Well, last bit, one of Vosh's favorite talking points is to accuse all who question U.S. media allegations against China, Iran, and Russia, and other anti-imperialist states of being the equivalent of Nazi Holocaust deniers. According to Vosh, if U.S. media said Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, or that the evil Spaniards had sunk the USS Maine, you must believe it. If you do not, you are the same as a neo-Nazi and deserve to be beaten up by Antifa, if not disappeared in order to protect the great American democracy. And this is from the debate that I had with him, which you all should go watch if you haven't, by the way, where uh, he said that I would have Albert Einstein beaten up by Antifa if I could, because Albert Einstein wasn't negative towards the USSR in its time, or something like that. Um, which is true. Me and my time-traveling Antifa squad will beat up everyone, everyone, uh, who, who, who disagrees with the U.S. State Department. Thank you. Anyway, that, that's the book, by the way. Uh, and, and the rest of it is no more, uh, uh, credible than the section we've looked at here. He, he nailed it in his book, because although it was... <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Hi, Progressive. Thank you. Hankies, fascists. Everyone knows you're dog whistling to anarchists and Antifa to be violent. You are calling for violence. What? You would have had Nelson Mandela beaten up by Antifa. What? You would have had, you would have had Albert Einstein punched in the face. You what? equate people. What you're Genocide doing. When denial. you call tankies fascists, everyone knows. You uh, we got to debate him again sometime, man. We got we to gotta have him on again. He's an esteemed guest. We, ha we got to have Burger King on hypothesis or his own opinion his understanding of bread tube as self-described marxists or socialists who are constantly getting an algorithmic push from youtube whereas jimmy Dore is suppressed and subjected to jimmy Dore has a million fucking he's got nine hundred twenty thousand fucking subscribers he posts vaccine misinfo constantly and he hasn't gotten any strikes for it to my knowledge all kinds of speech codes when they're getting so much establishment props, <laughs> getting profiled in the New York Times, that, that that looks suspicious. And it reminded him, as it reminded me, of past intelligence operations to- literally, literally, the guys I don't like got large numbers of YouTube views. This reminds me of Intel PsyOps. Jesus fuck. Oh my God. Co-opt and divide the left. And that's what BreadTube and many of its figures have been doing. Oh, by the way, just I just I have to let it know. Jimmy Dore, you're free to come on anytime. I'll come on to your thing. Max Blumenthal, you're a huge pussy, and I would love to talk to you sometime. Come on, don't be don't be a pussy. All right, come on. You you work for the, for RT, right? Like you you have to respect Vladimir Putin's imposing masculine idealism. Are you you? He's one of the people who works for for RT, right? Um. Yeah, regular contributor RT. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So, see, you like strongmen. Come on, you can get beat up by me. So, basically, the files that Kit and Sputnik, obtained, yeah. what they show is that in order to start undermining people who have been calling out the official lies around coronavirus and just talking about how destructive all these restrictions have been socially, especially to the most vulnerable people, 
And this is becoming a huge problem in Europe for these governments whose popularities are cratering. It's a huge problem for Boris Johnson. Um, it's why he's pulled back from a lockdown around New Year's. They, they're, they're recruiting the most influential and easily co-optable people who have some- Yeah, wait, what, what were your favorite CIA uh, operations? You know, the invasion of Guatemala, you know, the, the Banana Republic shenanigans, the United Fruit Company? Or was it when a bread tube video got three quarters of a million views and it made fun of Jimmy Dore? Which, what was your favorite CIA op? You know, uh, it's it's difficult to say which which was the most destructive. Left credibility to attack their critics. They don't want to attack them directly. They can't do that, and they can't have like, hey, you know, wait, the, the the UK Foreign Office or or Prince Charles himself come out and say these people are dangerous. No, they need someone who who seems kind of like um, seems kind of not just credible, what, but alternative and attractive. Why? The, why the fuck would Prince Charles be like, "Hey, these YouTubers are bad"? What? Just because Prince Charles contributes money to a company and that company does anti disinfo work, like what? Like these guys are like, why won't George Soros just come out on the news and talk shit directly, huh? Why won't? What are you? What are you talking about? What? What the fuck are you talking about? Convincing. Abigail Thorne is the perfect person for this. I mean, Philosophy Tube has a million subscribers. It has, uh, she has over 7,000 Patreon oh. subs subscribers. It has, uh, she has over oh, okay. 7,000 Patreon subscribers. That was a mischief. I was, I'm just, I'm keeping an eye out. That, that wasn't. It as in the channel, then she is in the person. That's fine. She's very amiable. The YouTube videos she does on philosophy and history are extremely creative, using oh. artisanal sound and costumes and oh. acting. Um, it's, it's really another level. Oh. But, you know, you, you, it's not organic. As oh. Kit proved, what was happening here was the royal institution run by the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, was putting up the money for this intelligence initiative. Wait, is there any evidence that her channel as a whole is funded by that fucking organist? Wait, I th the documents you found just show that she's working on one project with them, which has a definitive timeline. What? what what's your, the whole channel? The whole time? Damn, Abigail. Been in the been in the 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 fucking pocket of the British State Department for a while, I guess. And they had actually been cratering themselves. They'd been running out of money. They were selling off their art collection. The British Who, state steps in through this culture fund the, as the pandemic is the declared, crown gives them a bunch of money earmarked for video production, which is suspicious. And then what? they bring in Valent Projects as the contractor and Emil Khan. This is a group that had cut its teeth in the Syrian dirty war, uh, whitewashing extremist, violent extremist organizations like the CIA-backed Free Syrian Army. Emil yeah. Khan was directly involved in trying to rebrand them and make them look... It all comes back to Assad for these guys. Um, I, I feel like if, if we're going with the Nazi analogies here, I feel like in a way, the um, Syria is kind of like... Um, Syria is kind of like their Holocaust, where it's like a pivotal historical event through which the the actors on all sides like their relationship to that particular event defines their political allegiances moving forward so the thing is assad is like very obviously and objectively a tyrannical dictator like it's really obvious there have been so many international organizations that have with very little effort you know corroborated to determine that yes he uses chemical weapons against the population yes it's not just a haha -ha whoopsie accident that millions of people fled or despise him from abroad you know it's not it's not a fucking you know uh mystery um but because it's such an obvious uh, line for everyone outside of like Russia, I guess, because Russia has a Russia and Assad, they have a you know a good relationship. Um, what this means is that any institution that has ever taken the correct position on Syria is now infinitely and forever more like State Department shit. You know what I mean? So it like it's it's kind of like the moon landing is for people who believe the moon landing was faked, where any institution that has ever accepted the narrative that the moon landing actually took place is now one they no longer have to trust. It's a way of writing off like every institution beforehand, you know? Secular and not affiliated with Al Qaeda, which they actually were. They were doing all kinds of astroturfing in Syria to set up media organizations to you know, do white helmet style actions. 
that would all be conveyed back to the British and U.S. public through Western media. We've all been through these points. And they bring, they're bringing those tactics back to the U.K. through this uh, project, which they call Countering Pseudoscience. Revalent projects, they, get all these, they do all this research on people who have COVID skeptical views, who are critical of restrictions. And they use that research, basically using the British public as a laboratory for creating this new channel. For Remember, we're talking about 10 Skype interviews 10 in-person interviews and a few more, you know, basically using the United Kingdom public as a lab rat upon which to test their, their <laughs> Assad decrying theory. You know, it's, it's, it's some Skype interviews. The, the level of stuff being done by that organization was something I could have been approved to do for my baccalaureate thesis back when I was in university. Like literally that's it, you know, um, Vosh, but isn't this more complicated? Like, Iraq and Libya turned out terrible when we killed their dictators. Gray zone are idiots, but still. No, in, with regards to Assad, it's very uncomplicated. He's very obviously bad. There's really not, like, much room to debate there. It's very, very clear that he's terrible. It's not just the chemical weapons, you know. It's the gunning down protesters. It's the massive suppression of, like, given groups over others. It's, it's like the mismanagement of the country, the economy. It's like holistic. It, there's really very, very, very little... It's very little to defend there. Um, now, if you want to make the argument that there's a lot of nuance to the other groups involved there outside of the Syrian government, then there totally, totally is. But these guys aren't just arguing that it's complicated and that America has biased geopolitical interests, which is obviously true. They're taking the pro-Assad side. They have to because Russia is pro-Assad and this guy works for the Russian government. So... It's, it's as simple as that, you know. There, you can have a contrary opinion on this that is correct, but they can't have that opinion because the correct contrary opinion would not be doggedly, uh, you know, um, pro-Assad, like, across the board. For Abigail Thorne, who is the talent, and it's all covert. Abigail Thorne isn't acknowledging any of this. Abigail Thorne is a founding key member of BreadTube, and so it raises questions <laughs> about the rest of these BreadTube Influencers. I mean, you she, got Vosh, she's on the board of directors. Uh, this gamer, former gamer, from gamer. Hills, Wait, who, why? Why do they always call me gamer? Is it the Bloodborne thing? Why they always call me a fucking get? What we all, everyone plays video games now. It's 2021. It's almost 20. Everyone plays video games. Vosh, about the rest of these bread tube influencers. I mean, you've got Vosh. Vosh, uh, who's Hunter this Ray. gamer, gamer, former gamer from Beverly Hills, who. <laughs> You know, is always attacking anti-war leftists. He's always <laughs> saying, you know, the gray zone is involved in some secret red-brown alliance with fascists. Uh, you know, we're sponsored by Russia. All of the the typical narratives. He he he, he literally works for the Russian government. He li he it's he, it's not regular contributor to Sputnik and RT. And that's not even to speak of some of the other stuff. Sputnik. Russian state-owned news agency. The government controls what they put out. RT. International television network funded by the tax budget of the Russian government. Again, they control what gets put out. Like, no, you can't quote Wik Wikipedia. <laughs> no, he doesn't work. That's fake. Sputnik? Sputnik. Sputnik. Yeah, Sputnik is really bad. I think it's worse than RT. Called for uh, torturing and kill, uh, sending Julian Assange to be tortured in a CIA black site just to trigger his supporters. <laughs> why, why do you keep feeding me, man? Why, you know I like this. Why do you keep stroking? What, you, you, you know I like this. Why, come on. <laughs> this was so funny. Um, he has made so many disgusting statements about anti-imperialist leftists. <laughs> and then you have um, Sean, who made a video about you, attacking you, who huh? I actually didn't know he was affiliated with Bread too, but he's considered <laughs> part of their constellation. And the video attacking you, which relies heavily on official sources, you know, the <laughs> FDA says that, the World Health Organization says that. In, in, in Sean's video... He pointed out that Jimmy Dore had lied about the content of the article he was already reading, and Jimmy Dore acknowledged that he was wrong, and then lied about firing an editor that never existed. He, th it had nothing to do with external sources. It was, he, he admitted that he lied, 
in about the thing he was already citing. It looks a lot like this countering pseudoscience material. What, what official it was sources? Very strategically placed. It was algorithmically boosted on YouTube. Oh, it was so. definitely algorithmically boosted on YouTube. Dude, I got ratioed on YouTube. The CIA must be involved. Le oh, how does it? How hard do you have to cope? Oh my God! I get it. The world. The world must be so comforting. If you have this kind of worldview, dude, you get ratioed on Twitter. It was the CIA that did it. You know, you stub your toe in the morning. It was the CIA that did it. You admit that you were wrong in a video because another video called you out for it. Well, actually, that only happened because the CIA used their deep intelligence network to find out all the t stupid shit. YouTube. No fucking doubt about that, that they was given the favor treatment on YouTube, the CIA and the intelligence uh ah, it, it, again again this this really is like flat earth tier in terms of how much like how how deep in the conspiracy road you have to be the idea that the cia the arguably the most influential intelligence agency in the history of the planet wants to take you down by algorithmically boosting a video from a popular YouTuber pointing out you lied in a manner that you agreed to. Jesus, fuck, man. And, like, it, why wouldn't they just, like, delete your channel? Like, if, if, if they have so much control, why wouldn't they just... Why wouldn't they just start, cop like, striking you for community guidelines violations and all the anti-vax stuff that you put out? Like, I, I don't think for a moment that Jimmy Dore actually believes this, because if he did, it would have been the first thing that he said. When he was called out for his mistake, his immediate response had to be acknowledging that it was a mistake, because that was the thing that saved him the most face. And now that, you know, it's been a couple of weeks and he's talking with the other loonies and things have settled down a bit, he can go back to, you know, oh, well, it was all the CIA op. Holden, that Google and YouTube, they're in bed with the fucking intelligence community. Of course they are, Google, Alphabet. The biggest fucking largest, most profitable communications company in the history of the fucking world. Any company. Of course they are. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupt you. But yes, that was when as soon as I read the story, I'm like, oh, that's 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 they they funded this shit. That hit job on me because it was super professionally done. Mm. It looked like it had to have some resources behind it. But go ahead. It was a Sean video. He just read stuff out loud over a over a still image. <laughs> Look at the production video on this piece. It's 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 unbelievable. Yeah, no, feel free to interrupt. Um, we we know how the how intelligence in the UK and US operates um, since the end of the Cold War. They operate through cutouts and assets. It doesn't even have an unusual number of views. Jimmy Dore's shit has 600,000 views. The last one is 500,000. Did the CIA also boost the 1776 report? Did the CIA boost the video saying that bombing Hiroshima and Nagasaki was morally indefensible? Or the video on the death penalty? What about the bell curve? Did the CIA just boost all... Just, just is they, Have they boosted every video? Oh, they forgot to boost his 100k Q&A. Guess the CIA is fallible. That they don't want to take credit directly, like Bellingcat. For like we've 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 revealed Bellingcat on this show when we were reporting accurately about Syria. So Bellingcat's one of these it's people they get money Syria. from the U.S. government and the U.K. government, and they go and all they are is a propaganda machine to knock down people like us who are telling the truth about the military industrial complex imperialistic agenda, right? And so they they they're funded by the same governments who are doing this. Really, it's from the military industrial complex because I do. So they get the money, then they do that, and that's what it leaks. They're doing the same thing now. With COVID, so anybody, totally. who, anybody who has a counter narrative to COVID, they get money from these people to do a hit job, which is exactly what they did on me. Exactly, Bellingcat is a perfect example. I'm glad you brought him up. One of Bellingcat's biggest funders is the National Endowment for Democracy. Yes, which the presents NED. itself. The Go NED. Ahead. Yeah, it's the regime change arm of the U.S. government. So this is one of the reasons why I've told you guys that if you want to be a rational person, it's not enough to simply. Um, it's not enough to simply take down their sources. You know, you have to take down the actual information. So at this point, the conspiracy has run so deep that any media produced through any social media channel 
mu that that disagrees with them must be funded by the CIA because the CIA has connections to social media. Like it, at this point, like they can they can use this to dismiss anything. And I'm reminded whenever I see stuff like this of Nick Fuentes sneeringly dismissing any lab coat um, research on race and IQ or, you know, any academics uh, who doing research on like World War II or on the Holocaust, where anytime you have a, you know, contrary view uh, to, to, to not just an establishment or mainstream view, but like an unambiguously universally accepted view. Well, the fact that it's so unambiguously universally accepted is only more proof that of the conspiracy against you, really. It's just, it's exactly the same, um, uh, political, you know, write-off, basically. And they present themselves as uh, a nonprofit, but they're funded entirely by the U.S. government. They work hand-in-glove with U.S. intelligence. They cultivate dissidents. They fund media outlets in countries where the U.S. seeks regime change. And there's this really remarkable article um, by David Ignatius from the Washington Post in 1991, back when he was a correspondent. I think it's called Innocence Abroad. And in this article, Ignatius outlines a series of what he calls... Wait, I'm sorry, I missed that. Do they not know what nonprofit means? Nonprofit just means that it's a nonprofit. A nonprofit can be funded. Wait, what? He just said they claim to be a nonprofit, but they're funded by... Yeah, you nonprofits are funded. No, nonprofit doesn't mean they're not funded. You still have to fund them somehow. I, I, I missed... That was so stupid. I missed that. Over in the regime change... And there's this really remarkable media outlets in countries with U.S. intelligence, profit, but they're funded entirely by the U.S. government. Themselves as uh, a nonprofit, but they're funded entirely by the U.S. government. I can't believe I missed that. He's so fucking stupid. Yeah, uh, no. Wh what does that have to... Okay. They work hand in glove back when... In this article, Ignatius outlines a series of what he calls overt operators who are billionaires or you know oligarchs uh unions and ngos like the national endowment for democracy that are doing the work of oh <laughs> you're right he he got that confused because in russia it's different in russia things funded through government sources often are for-profit institutions for oligarchs you're totally right yeah I, I forgot about that you're right in in russia when when the government's giving you money it usually is a way to bleed it uh out through the the you know the to the corrupt um oligarchs that run it yeah my bad of the CIA and NGOs like the National Endowment for Democracy that are doing the work of the CIA to topple post soviet <sighs> oligarchs, uh, unions, unions, and NGOs like the National Endowment for oligarchs Democracy. Oligarchs and unions. That are doing Historically, the work of the CIA uh, to topple post soviet yeah. socialist governments, but and you know by spurring color revolutions, but doing it in the open. Not like the CIA used to do in... Oh, a good um, shorthand for lefty engagement online is if anyone ever uses the term color revolution, it's okay to post that low-tier god image, uh, encouraging them to uh, uh, kill themselves. That That's a very good, just instant snap, like you save so much time. Guatemala or Iran, where they would... I'll add the emo tonight, was secret, And then when it was exposed, it was this giant scandal. And so one of the, you know, the NED is one of the groups he names. The NED, uh, an NED founder, Alan Weinstein, was quoted in that article saying, "What we are doing, what the CIA used to do covertly in the open. I always quote Weinstein because that explains how all of these intelligence operations, especially the, on the information warfare side, function. They get funded through USAID or NED. And it so fucking boring. Holy shit. How the fuck do people watch this? I, I feel like every single time I watch a video by Jimmy Dore or any of these gray zone fucks, it's always the same video over and over again. Now, here's how these institutions lied about Syria. We're not going to explain how. Everything that disagrees with us is actually funded by the governments that we don't like. We're funded by the governments we do like, but we don't talk about that as much. And this is how they're all opposing actual anti-war, anti-imperialist leftists. It's every single, and they're so uncharismatic. Jesus, fuck. It goes to Dead some fish eye boy over here. Could some fucking bogus media organization and wake a crowd up with organic. an air horn. And so, it, you know, the hand of intelligence. Shut up. Anti semi is something oh, wait, hold on. who is helping the CIA do regime change in countries where it wanted to topple the government uh, and doing so proudly. So, I mean, all the elements are there. It's clear what's going on. And this narrative around COVID has really 
is something the establishment is holding on to the same way they were holding on to the interventionist regime change narrative around Syria and it's attack- always Syria dude can you imagine like like being a lefty and like 80% of everything you talk about is is defending Assad and that's it that's like the only fucking thing that you talk about holy shit attacking all of uh, the critics and it's not just it's, it's absolutely not limited to this one case of Abigail Thorne being astroturfed and we will be exposing more in the future I'm get, sure get it. me I really wish um, Julian Assange was free because I know he would help expose so much of this um, and that's part of the point of keeping him in jail is there are so many more establishment deceptions that people like him knew how to expose these documents I'm so glad they're seeing the light of day but there's, there, I guarantee there will be more and more, and they need to be reported on. Do you, so um, how? I think it's very pervasive. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, but I think I was talking to somebody about this earlier, and I was like, uh, so do you think the Young Turks gets this kind of people like that? I'm trying to figure out who is getting this. Hey, let's just go over everyone that I don't like. Hey, um, okay, so... There's this uh, there's this bagger at the grocery store that I go to, and he gives me a nasty look anytime I um and anytime I go there and get my groceries. Do you think do you think you have anything on him? Do you think there's a a chance maybe that he he might also be you know funded uh by, by the by the U.S. government? It's money in the United States, like TYT has been, you know, so horrible since 2015, and then they got the 24 million dollars and. And I'm like, do you think they're getting money from this to, to say that shit about Julian Assange and all that stuff about Syria? Why would they do that? Oh, my and- God. I can't with the Syria. The video says COVID restriction critics, but all they talk about is Syria. That's the only fucking thing they care about. And it's because it's their fucking Holocaust. It's their big fucking pivotal shit. Move on. The- Move on. God, you're so fucking their- boring. Uh, everybody else does too, and everybody else sells way more. They do. They sell coffee. The Young Turks are selling fucking coffee. They're what? selling emojis. They're selling emojis. They're selling books they never wrote. Jack Uger literally sold a book and he never fucking wrote it, which is illegal. <laughs> but- what? Even if it wasn't written by him, ghostwriting isn't illegal. Why would that be illegal? How would that be illegal? What? What, what, what the fuck is he saying? What? Yeah, speaking of selling out, where's his merch section? Support the Jimmy Doe Show. Buy official merch. JimmyDoreComedy.com slash store. Ah, yes, at the very top, Let's Go Brandon. It's all Let's Go Brandon shit. That's nice. Then we have Progressive Power. These look like shit. 19 bucks for a shirt? You getting these from China? Jesus. Wait, what? I don't know what this is. It's the name of a drink. Is there a reason they chose that one in particular? <laughs> it's... Yeah, this is literal drop shipping stuff. I really, I gotta, I gotta work on getting my my store up and running again. We we have so many designs that are approved. Oh, we're gonna bombard you guys. You're gonna have the sickest merch to walk around in. And the best part is, most of the merch that I sell, you won't even be able to tell it's Vosh merch. So nobody will beat you up. It literally just neoliberalism sucks and red font. Who? Th- so lazy. So lazy. But somehow I'm the fucking grifter. And by the way, for a whole year during the lockdowns at the end of every video, I said, don't give me money. Keep your money. Nobody's got a job. Did anybody else on YouTube? I guess they missed that in that video too. But I sell t-shirts. So that's proof positive that somehow I don't believe what I'm saying. This is left and right agreeing with this. Uh, coronavirus to advance Corona? Nazi domination. Whoa! Okay. A bunch of white right-wing extremists running around exploiting uh, coronavirus to advance their Nazi domination dreams. The uh, people of Guadeloupe, which is a French neo-colony in the Caribbean, including union leaders, took over the legislative body there to protest vaccine passports 
and mandates, and along with the entire austerity regime they're living under, under the control of billionaire former central billionaire former banker Emmanuel Macron. This happened, and it's just been completely ignored. What in the fuck are we talking about right now? What the fuck does that have to do with what? In, in media, this is part of the this this freedom movement that's taking Nobly. place around the world, while authorities try to make the word freedom a kind of a dirty word. It's, 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 so it's very threatening, and it's understandable that you would have these projects crop up where intelligence is involved. And so, uh, so, you, it's a, so, yeah. when, so when you're watching someone do a, uh, a critical video uh, or a video trying to knock down people who are anti-war or anti-imperialism, like this show, your show, uh, they've, well, there's a good chance they've been co-opted is what you're saying, right? That's what you're saying. There's a good chance they've been corrupted. Well, and there's more than one way to co-opt. Like, does, would you say an M, uh, you know, a six figure MSNBC contract would also serve that purpose to oh, silence Sam someone and to go along with the narrative? There's lots of different ways they can do this, right? Has I, Sam Cedar gotten a contract that big? Probably not. No, he only contributed. I don't know. It's just MSNBC. I know Sam used to contribute to that. I mean, on Syria, yeah, there was a huge level Syria! of so many of the people involved in society. They came under a coordinated attack, but it started in progressive media. Uh, the Nation magazine published one of the first attacks by Greg Gonsalves, this Yale epidemiologist. On Syria? The Carrington Declaration. And it turns out from emails that came out through FOIA that Gonsalves was working hand in glove uh, with NIH director Francis Collins oh, and okay, Anthony COVID. Fauci. To Dr. Attack Fauci! Them. And, you know, there's so many other attacks on GBR and progressive publications. Dr. Fauci! This was coordinated. What mask? And what is the NIH? Two masks! Or, or what, are, what are Fauci involved in? That is another aspect of the permanent state that connect, connects directly to the in military intelligence apparatus, or at least indirectly. This biomedical establishment or regime that has shown its face for the first time to the public in a very clear way in this pandemic is just another aspect of the same apparatus we've been talking about, this permanent bureaucracy that we never elected, uh, that, that has very little transparency. And they're going after their critics. I mean, the White House has gone directly after RFK Jr. Fauci's going after him in the open, but they've been going after him behind closed doors. And as Corey Morningstar, the researcher, revealed, the same public relations firm that was used by the Syrian White Helmets, Purpose UK, has been hired by the UN to, quote unquote, flood the zone on Twitter to push back at COVID skeptical narrative. Wait, is this real? Wait, hold on. ...was presented in these attack pieces to mostly progressive, a mostly progressive audience as a front for the Koch brothers. This is the same- Who are one, like the key boogeyman. They're like the, the, the Montgomery Burns in the minds of any, uh, and, and There, he's downplaying the Koch brothers. The Koch brothers who have literally spent like half a century with unimaginable media influence. He he's after after going like, hey, listen, everyone who doesn't like us is CIA and every all these people, all the bread tubers, they're all working against they're all conspiring. Oh, the Koch brothers? Oh yeah, they're just like a boogeyman, the leftist. They don't they don't do anything. Yeah. The, 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 again, like again, guys, I've said this before. These guys are fascists. They're not lefties, okay? They talk a big game about being leftist because they say anti-imperialism a lot, but then they support imperialism being done by other other governments. They talk about healthcare. Do they care about healthcare enough to actually do anything about it? No. Uh Jimmy Dore had his March for M for A thing where he stood up on a stage in front of a hundred cameras and zero people and screamed about essentially himself, you know? Um Lefty issues are just an optical uh, fringe for them, a way of attracting left-leaning people. The substance of their content is thoroughly right-wing. So the, who's doing that? The, the PR firm that helped create the Syrian white helmets. It's called Purpose UK. No Stop shit. Stop talking Quit. about Syria. I can't. Before your morning starts, on a granular level, in the most important aspects of the dirty war on Syria, uh, you know, it's not me, you know, I, um, but I, I, I agree that the CIA actually didn't like Trump because he was a little bit of a problem for them. He wouldn't. Yep, exactly that, now we're going to hold water for Trump. Yep, 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 yep. There we go. The CIA. The CIA was sending uh, bread tubers after me. They're also against Trump. Exactly everything they said to do. And they didn't like that. And so they leaked the contents of his phone call to the Ukraine. They did the same thing to Joe Biden, by the way. He's not in office in fucking five seconds. And they're releasing transcript of one of his phone calls to the leader of India, I think. And what do you think that is for? That is for them to let Joe Biden and his crew know we're in charge. We're in yep. charge, not you. I lied about what the crowd was actually chanting. Establishment grassroots as a way to examine. Coming on. 
and uh, have a happy new year. Hopefully we'll see you in the new I feel like if I was anywhere near either Jimmy Dore or Blumenthal, my brainwaves would kill them on contact, you know? I, I, I feel, uh, do, you, do you think they have to sleep in sensory deprivation chambers so there's absolutely no chance of, like, superior mind waves, like, traveling through the walls and, like, hitting them and killing them instantly? You know what I mean? That, like, to, like intelligence to them is like the sun to an albino. I mean, it's, like, it's got to be incredibly painful at the very least. Like, holy shit. Oh, my God. I can't, I wonder if there's any video I could watch that has Max Blumenthal in it that doesn't mention Syria. You know what I mean? I, I feel like I'd, I feel like I could spend my entire life tearing through this. And I would never, I, I would like, I would never, ever, ever find it. I, I don't know if it's even possible. Maybe you'd have to find content from before the Syrian refugee crisis, maybe? When was the last time on Jimmy Dore's show was there a video that was like, about left-leaning stuff? Because this is all COVID shit, right? Uh, okay. Leftist because- Oh my god! The historic victory in Chile, 42,000 views. Holy shit, nobody fucking- His audience doesn't care! Sandwich between dumbest pro-vax argument ever, here's Blumenthal again, and Fauci's Wuhan research worse than you thought. Big Pharma, Omicron, uh, this is just a Christmas video, I guess. Uh, van vax, COVID- uh, city actually defunded police. What happened? Oh my god, is this an anti-defunding police thing? What are, what are the comments? I'm not- I can't read the I can't watch the video. I'll die. I'll die if I watch the video. Hold on. They only freak out when they target rich areas. They were like, wait, we meant to defund you, not like that. I don't see anyone here talking. What did happen? Certain types of incidents. Oh, is it just, like, actually talking about what happened? Okay, fine. That could be fine. Maybe this can be- maybe that can count? Maybe? Possibly? Uh, apart from it, yeah, this just seems like conservative bait, really. W what about the comments in this? Are people... I don't know, people are positive. That's nice. Um, I feel like a lot of Jimmy Dore's audience is okay with progressive or left-leaning stuff as long as it's taking place outside of America. You know what I mean? It's kind of like how Glenn Greenwald is a Republican, but he, and he, he uh, 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 you know, at least ostensibly still, still supports Lula, you know? Though he'll have to turn on that eventually too. He'll support Bolsonaro over Lula, you know, when, when the time comes. I think this is this is a good arc. This is a good arc. We should stick with this. This is too much fun.